I forgot about that sound. Yeah, I forgot it. I forgot that I'd caught that too. Hope I didn't screw it up. So, did you guys see that video of uh, Scotty Jensen from Saturday night with the Methanol Express? I got to slow that down. I just uploaded it a little bit ago. So, he jumped all four tires out of the dirt. I mean, it was it was nose up and. Did you get a good whatever. shot of that, Charles? I did, but actually, um, uh, Ryan Majeski got he with your camera got a photo of it with all four in the air. Jeez. <laughs> he was um he was texting Cody and Roos all weekend and Cody was telling him <laughs> something about change your this setting and yeah he, Ryan was he lucky got he could turn the camera on. That's all I'm gonna he say got, he got it positive. he got it when she popped and it was all four sky high. It was uh well, that I was rough. That. I got that on my pewter. I just gotta find it. So that's we scary. Can, we can do that a little bit later. Um Welcome, everybody. It's Monday night, March 7th. It's Let's Grow Pulling Live and sponsored by the Outlaw Truck and Tractor Pulling Association. Clint Tucker calls us Hollywood Squares. And um, isn't somebody supposed to be in the middle, like the pretty one, Charles? Is that why we don't have any right in the middle? Or how does that work? I, Paul Romax, they absent. So uh, we'll just yeah. uh, go with that. Fair enough. Fair enough. So Charles Post right there in the middle. Um, a little shinier tonight than normal. I see that. So. The great stu Justin Stuckin Schneider from somewhere in Missouri, who he outmarried. He outmarried. If you ever met his beautiful wife, so we call it misery right now because the weather don't know what to do. That's okay. We got four inches of snow, and it was sixty a couple days ago. But Iowa either has tornadoes or eight inches of snow. So what are you gonna do? Uh -huh. yep. So the Ryan Rusink below Justin Ken Gerard is our special guest tonight. And when we say special, you know what we mean when we say yeah, special thanks. from Gerard <laughs> Auctions, and then. Vanderholm Media, uh, we have an empty spot tonight, and we auctioned off for 1 million pesos. Cody donated that money to Ryan's alcohol fund. So I think, uh, all in all, I think we're going to have a really good show tonight, guys. So, no, we're excited. <clears throat> we're going to talk about Cowtown Showdown um, after we talk to Ken and Justin about the auction. We're going to open up with these guys. Uh, Charles and I will kind of wrap up the coin a little bit as well towards the end of the show. But Really exciting auction going on right now. I'm gonna let Ryan take over. This is the Tractor Zoom uh, part of the show and talking cool stuff. And Ryan, I'll start putting photos up if that's okay. Or tell me what tell me what to do and when, okay, buddy? Yeah, that's fine. Um, well, I know that, and the reason that I brought Ken on was was because I know that a lot of you guys who are watching tonight either knew about Farm All Land or hopefully you were there to experience some of that magic that was in that building. Um, and as most of you know, Jerry's been, uh, he passed away about six months ago. And, um, if any of you were ever there, you ever had the chance to, you know, if you ever met Jerry and he said, Hey, come take a peek in the office. This is what, what Jason's scrolling through right now is just a little bit of what was in the office. Jerry's, uh, aside from, having a, a really big collection of, of uh, tractors, Jerry had literally thousands of pieces of memorabilia, lots of it Harvester, um, well, most all of it Harvester related, but also an awful lot of uh, pulling related stuff. And so for the final auction, Ken, is, uh, Ken and his brother Mike are uh, selling off all of the pulling toys that you see here, as well as uh, 13 or 14 tractors, actual full-size running tractors um, from Jerry's estate. And since we do have people who collect uh, some of the pulling toys, I wanted to just kind of go through and give Ken and Justin a chance to speak. One of Justin's toys is on here as well, uh, one that's very near and dear to my heart. And uh, so... I figured this would give you guys a chance to ask questions uh, if anybody's bidding on stuff or wanted you know, wanted to know more about some of Jerry's collection or you know whatnot. Now's your chance to ask away. But Ken, the thanks for are, joining us, Justin. Thank you as well. The yeah. links are in the comments, Bruce. Cool. And you know, yeah, so the links are in the comments in in the event that uh, you guys want to get involved. This is your final chance, your last chance. And I know any of you guys who read Interesting Iron have heard me say, this is your last chance, blah, blah, blah. 
a bunch of times. Well, now I'm really not kidding. So, can't you know, so this out. is uh, this is a lot of Jerry's favorites. Uh, Jerry had closed the museum, like you said. If he had been there, you got to see it all in person. Uh, but he he kept some, and uh, he brought all these pulling tractors home, and then his belt buckles. And he kept a lot of his manuals, and like you said, he did keep about a dozen real tractors as well. And uh, ended up passing away uh, back in October. And uh, Joyce is going to downsize his widow, and she said, "Ken, come get the rest." You know, and she she had a hard time with it. This last one's hard, you know. And Jerry was alive, and when a collector decides to do uh, do his own collection, it's a lot easier on the family. Um, but anyway, we went down, picked it all up, and uh, back at our place. Uh, like I said, the auctions are uh, close out next Monday and Tuesday. They're open now. Monday night's auction is all uh, Jerry's belt buckle collection. Probably had the biggest collection of international harvester belt buckles in the country. And then a super collection of manuals and memorabilia and some trinkety stuff. And then uh, Tuesday nights, the his real tractors, then over 116 scale pulling tractors, all the resin cast ones and some just awesome custom ones, including, like we said, uh, one of Justin's tractors and uh, real tractors as well and memorabilia. So um, I think like 1300 lots, something like that for the two days. Hey, Ken, somebody asked, what would you say the rarest pulling model was of his collection? Didn't he have an Indiana Rascal that was built by C&M? Uh, yes, I don't he think he has the Indiana Rascal. I think he has no. the other C&M one. It's, um, uh, he has got the rooster, the, the C&M rooster, Danny Deans. Yeah, well, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't built by C&M. Uh, he, he's got Workhorse. The Workhorse, okay. The workhorse, that, yeah. That yep. is probably the rarest one on his auction. You know, as far as ones that were mass produced, you know, a lot of his, he's got all the resin cast ones, of course, you uh -huh. know, I think almost every resin cast one made. Um, I think probably the best one on there as far as rarity is actually that, that sled true. with the semi, with the Peterbilt yeah, semi. Yeah. Um, for That's the hundreds of thousands of toys I've got to sell, uh, we've never had one of these come through. I've only seen three of those on an auction in my life, or, you know, since they've been built. Yeah, they're um, awesome. I mean, they're 16 scale. They're uh, yep. they're three and a half foot long sitting on the shelf, and they're, the they last, are cool. The last one that sold was on Kevin DeWitt's auction, and I think it brought upwards of 2,000 or something. But brand new, when uh, Gottman was building those, you could have bought that for like 800 bucks. Yep. Well, there's a lot of coulda, shoulda, wouldas in the world. Yeah, like right? <laughs> Hey Ken, when I scroll when I scroll the website, sorry, I'm sharing your website right now. Which one do I want to? Uh, click I, on the day two there, where the two twelve oh six are sitting side by one? side. Yep. Yeah, click view catalog. Okay, I just want to scroll while you're talking. And typically we have categories, so you can search just by the toys. And uh, but my software screwed up when I uploaded it. My guy's supposed to be fixing it tomorrow. So if you just go up to the search bar, just type in pull, and then it'll bring up all the pullers because it'll search for that keyword. But he's got a lot of good old custom ones, you know, that just, you know, some average guy built. Jerry liked them. Like I said, he liked the resins. And then you got the top of the line stuff. Uh, if you've never seen one of Justin's models in person, it is night and day difference than what a average builder can do. Justin stuff is, uh, and I'm not just saying that because you're on here, Justin. It's, it's top of the line, no doubt. Well, I appreciate that. I still learn every time I build one, though. <laughs> How many do you think you've built thus far? Me? Different, different pulling oh, tractors. Geez. I don't know. Probably four or five hundred. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe more than that. It just depends. I I don't think I'd be able to sit down and remember them all, honestly. Justin, remember this one, buddy? Oh, yeah. That was a good year. We had a lot of fun that year. Yeah. Yes, we did. I still wish I could have got one of those benches. You take me. <laughs> You taking me for a lot of money, Stuck and Schneider. I'm not gonna lie to you. You're a good cause. So. Somebody's got to do it. Yeah. Well, I thought my wife did that, but we're okay. <laughs> well, she's a lot better looking than I am, so. Well, that's easy. Come on. <laughs> so, if anybody wants to see what one of those demons like what on his auction is, this is the one that's out of my collection. But this is what you'll actually be buying or bidding on at that auction. So how many of those did you build, Justin? Uh, Bricker bought three of them. He took two home, and then he gave that one to uh, to Jerry. Okay. Uh, I built myself one. Brian Sandin has one. 
Scott Gustafson has one. And then there's a guy out in uh, Pennsylvania somewhere that got one. Okay. So, I don't know, probably seven of them, I think. What is this thing? Um, so that was a Cub Cadet made into a two plus two. So oh, it's about holy a cow. third quarter scale two plus two. It's it runs and drives. It's a uh, not not really a hydro. It's a electric drive, but uh, think, it's pretty neat. Kind of wild to drive. Would that pull a limited pro through the pits by any chance? <laughs> I doubt it. Ryan, you know what I'm thinking. Yeah, I know exactly what you're thinking. You, you know how hard I stand by Justin's answer. I want you, you know how hard the Sabbath sides work at pulling a tractor uphill in them pits. Right. And I guarantee you those side-by-sides got two or 300 pounds on that thing. <laughs> I gotta keep it is cool, though. You know, and if you want to bid, um, it's not a live auction. Um, it's just strictly online. That was the way we did Jerry's other stuff. And believe me, I love the live auctions and, and love doing it. And we really wanted to line it all up and have a big, you know, two, three-day blowout at the fairgrounds. But it just it wouldn't work the way Jerry's collection was set up. And he had so many pieces. And with the internet and I mean, we ship stuff all over the world on his last six sales. Uh, so we did it strictly online. It really, really worked well. Um, but we won't go through an auction off each piece. It's all timed out. And basically at six o'clock next Monday and Tuesday, our software will switch over and it'll close out eight items every two minutes. And if anybody bids on an item in the last 60 seconds, it resets the countdown clock at 60 seconds. So you can't, uh, it's not like eBay where you can bid at the last second and win. Kind of gives everybody a chance. I tried to buy a Model A Kenworth last March doing this, Ken, <laughs> and I thought, oh, yeah, and I was texting Roos and my buddy Doug, and, yeah, we came at a number, and that it just kept going, Ken. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it, if it's the only opportunity you give them to bid, it works just as well as the live auction. I mean, it, I, you hate to see the live auction industry end, uh, but more and more of it's going to online only all the time. Hey, Jason, scroll up just a second. Which one? Uh, go up to that black garden. Uh, go go back and go one higher. The one that uh, the Cub Cadet that's called the Alien. Yeah, I'm just waiting on my internet. Sorry. I think you had to go There's to the top. Holy cow. Yeah, it's 667. You're going the wrong way. I'm sorry. That's all right. There's a never say never that was built by CNM too, and those are pretty rare. Yeah, and it's super fragile too. They're starting to get uh, some casting rot and yep. uh, tough to handle them. Yep. You don't want to ship those. That tractor, one of the last times, actually, I think it was the last time that I ever got to spend any time with Jerry. Um, he was telling me stories with um, uh, Sarah Cool was there and her dad was there as well. And they were talking about the old garden tractor pulling days. When they hung it up, those guys were running like an 80% nitro blend on those motors. Hmm. So, I mean, that, that was a cackle fest tractor, if there ever was one. Uh, Jerry had three of these in the collection. We got two of them on this sale. I think we sold one of them on the first sales. That was the one his daughter uh, pulled with, and she didn't want it. And the boys had talked about keeping these, and they just don't have the room or the space for them. So uh, they're on the auction, too. But they're actually the ones that back in the early 80s that uh, uh, Jerry's two boys pulled with. Hmm. Wow. And I if you can find that, uh, put the auctions in the comments for those of you that are interested, um, I, I can put them in there again. You can scroll back up. I didn't mean to talk over your roofs, but oh, uh, if you can find that, uh, that, uh, that mini 1206, um, the uh, Ken, do you have any photos of the side shields or, or of, not the side shields, the uh, the fenders, fenders and the top yep. panels? If, so if you pull up the catalog, um, if you go back to Gerard bid and just in your keyword, type in 1206 and uh, it'll show up. It'll bring up about a dozen photos of that. Uh, yeah, but that was all custom airbrushed by a buddy of Jerry's that just uh, 
he said he'd stop by the museum every now and then and he was an old school pinstriper an old hot rodder and he'd do the little fancy stuff on the sides of hoods and all that and jerry just loved that stuff but he did all the custom paint on this well on that on that mini 1206 the guy who did um the murals on the fenders and on the the uh the top of the hood is the same guy who painted oh god probably 20 or 25 different pulling tractors so like the the mural on the red line fever or the blade graves 1066 is back in the day um at least one or two versions of the bullet um all that was uh, airbrushed by a guy named vilio and uh Jerry had him do uh, the miniature 1206. Hmm. I didn't know that part. Jerry never told me that. I did some research. You'll learn a lot from Big Rye. Yeah. <laughs> that thing is awesome. I guess it did start out as a Cub Cadet. That's what he started, based it off of, and then built it into a 1206. And and we've seen a lot of replica tractors over the years, you know, guys that built mini versions. And there's a lot of them that look kind of like the real thing. But this one, it looks like the real 1206. There's just, he did a fantastic job. That thing is awesome. <clears throat> So Ken, which one do you want to keep for your collection? You know, I I did get something on one of the first sales. I got a couple of things, uh, but I do have the Farmall Land sign that was out in front of the museum. I got that, and that's hanging in my new shop. So I wondered who I, I wondered who might end up. Yeah, with that. I'm pretty proud to have that. So that uh, that one's going to stay for now, and and you never know when it comes to the toys. And you know, we like to talk about like the high dollar toys. You know, these thousand dollar ones and five hundred and what have you. You know, but he'll have stuff in the auction, too, that's, you know, 50 or less than 100 bucks. So if you got to go to Pharma Land and, you know, just want a souvenir from it, uh, I mean, you can get something that was actually out of the collection. Uh, we got little, you know, uh, Pharma Land stickers that we can put on the belly of it so you can, you know, tell your kids about it someday. Uh, but there's definitely some really affordable stuff that's going to be in the auction, too. What's the story like on that one, that Allison 756? That's that's different. That's just a one-off custom that they would, I don't know who would have built that, but. That thing is most, really cool. Yeah, I'm, it's, I'm curious, it's done pretty good. I'm curious yeah, where clean. they found a scale correct Allison V12 to stick in there. I mean, if you know, for being a one-off, just where did you find the source material to, to pull that off? That's that's what's cool about it to me. Probably would have come out of like a one of those plastic models, like a 18th scale or something. It's the only thing I can think of. God, you, you're going like to send me on a Google Odyssey, brother. I'm going to have to find out what that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ken, on that on that uh, workhorse tractor, does that thing like have a box and everything with it? No, he doesn't have the box uh, for that. One. Most okay. of his resin ones, we found a box, but okay. that one we didn't. So, like. Not having the box, that will probably really hurt the value of the. You know, the guys that are that want the whole set, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it definitely does take take value away from it. Because if like if that one had a good box, it'd probably bring over two grand. But without the box, I don't I don't know what it would bring. You know, we sold but, one a couple of years ago, and I think it was um, uh, around twenty five hundred something yeah. like that. We yeah. sold the uh, Mike Gums collection. Yeah, we sold him a bunch yep. of stuff, Justin. I had mm -hmm. a bunch of years. That's when yep. that's when I first kind of got familiar with your stuff. Oh, okay. That's been a few years back, ain't it? Yeah, yep, I think so. Yep. Yep. He had a lot of neat stuff too. Yep. Had an absolute blizzard of an auction that day. Had two guys show up for the auction, was all live. And they were both from Illinois. They lived fifteen miles apart, never met each other before. Wow. Yep. <laughs> There's one that will be a big hit probably. Yep, yep. they're good. That in the red chrome. He's got yeah. both. I can't remember. Somebody told me once one was harder to find than the other one, but that was that's been a couple of years ago. The the silver one's harder than the red. Okay, that's one. what I was yeah, thinking. They made less of these. Yep, that sounds right. That's the one that I wanted. Which the young blood or the red line fever? Red line fever. I'll take the silver silver or the red chrome, either one. <laughs> I'm not fancy like that. I don't have chrome. <laughs> Mine's just boring. 
Ken, what what do you think that silver chrome one's going to go for? You know, I think the last one we had was around you know seven eight hundred. But then you got to add the Jerry factor in it, and Ryan yep. and I have talked about that before, and we saw yep. it on the last auction. So, you know, it's uh, you kind of throw some of that stuff out the window because he definitely got a premium out of some of his stuff because it was his. Now, you know, some of them guys got their souvenirs, so maybe we're a little back, you know, a little more back to a regular market. But seven dollar corn has kind of changed some of this stuff up for us too. My guess is it'll be close to a thousand because if you watch some of the toy auction stuff, just like on like through Facebook, it's it's unreal what that stuff's bringing right now. Yeah, the workhorse is at seven hundred right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that'll I'm, probably touch fifteen hundred easy. I didn't say the red the red chrome one is at three ten. Yeah. yeah. Usually, I think two years ago you could have bought one of those pretty reasonably for like four fifty to five hundred. You're screaming demons at six and a quarter right now, Justin. Yeah, I seen that. I don't so know what it'll bring. Let, let me ask you this. Has, has 3D printing changed how you, I mean, have you done anything with 3D printing for some of the stuff yet? So everything that I do is 3D printed other than like I start with an Ertl toy, but I also still use a lot of aluminum and steel, but like, so say the roll cage rear, the wheelie bars and all that, most of that stuff's always 3D printed now because Used to be when I build a toy, you'd build one or two, and now you're building ten or twelve of each one. So you can add a lot better detail and try to cut the cost back a little bit. <laughs> that thing is so cool. I need that. That is pretty neat. What's it what's it take to print a time wise to print a roll cage anymore? Well, I so the printers that I have, I basically just use them for prototyping. Uh the quality of print that the printers I have will do isn't you know, it, it would take a lot of primer to fill the imperfections and stuff. So I have a company, they have resin printers and they do a better quality. So I'm not really sure. I would say to print like an average roll cage, it would probably take four to six hours. Because, uh, I mean, some of the stuff I do print still, like my seats, I print those because the texture of them actually makes them look more, really? you know, replicated. So, like, to print three racing seats to put in a roll cage takes, like, an hour and 20 minutes. So. So, before 3D printing, I mean, shoot, that's that's taken a lot of a lot of your uh, time out of hand carving, doing some of that stuff. I mean, yeah. how's, that, how's that change for your business type of thing? That, it, it makes it easier, but, you know, you also have the design time. Like, to draw up a roll cage would probably take me an hour, an hour and a half, something like that. But. You know, if you're building 10 toys, you take that hour and a half labor to over, you know, over 10, it ain't that bad. And then a lot of the tractors use the same roll cage. So did you have prior CAD modeling experience for this? Yeah, when I, I went to Votech in, in high school and I took one CAD so class, but basically I'm just kind of self-taught. <laughs> if everybody else is doing it, I said, surely I can do it. So I just watched some YouTube videos and figured it out. But I use Mastercam is what I use, and most people use Fusion 360 or SolidWorks, but I don't. I don't have either one of those programs. I had Mastercam because that's what I use to run my CNC machines. So, kind of a two birds one stone thing. But no, the 3D printing world is just it's it's changed everything. I mean, you know, anybody that has any kind of 3D modeling background can build a toy tractor now, basically. You know, but you know, I, I don't know. I still don't think just anybody can do it, Justin. Well, <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I can't build a birdhouse, so you what? guys are, yeah. It makes it easier, I'll just say that. But. Ken, what lot number is that yellow 2 plus 2? Uh, it's fairly early. Um, uh, 616, so it's the 16th toy on Tuesday night's auction. That was made by Herman Wrenchke. He was from Geneseo, Illinois. I actually have a white one in my collection that matches that I had bought. I bought from Herman to give to my father-in-law, who's an IH and a Green Bay guy. And actually, Herman passed away shortly after I bought it, so I kept it, and my father-in-law was out. So Those two plus twos, like in original boxes, original paint, it's amazing what they will bring. But that yellow one's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. 
Yep, it's Wouldn't neat. It? Something different. And a lot of guys, you know, this custom deal, it's all about yeah. all about having something say, I got one and you don't. So what do you think it'll bring? What, two to three hundred? Uh, it's at easy. three. It's at three seventy right now. Yeah. So we'll just we'll just go up from there. Yeah, that'll be a nice piece. And and all those eight scales, those are kind of hard to find. Those will bring some good money. Yeah, a scale market's really good. They're yeah. kind of made in limited quantity. And and a scale that market about oh ten years ago kind of took a dive. It yeah, was it too was big. big. Nobody wanted it, yeah. and it's really came back the last couple of years. There's well, that, there's that guys white that have M, it and, That white M's pretty rare. I got one of those, and I think I gave three fifty for it whenever I it, bought mine. Probably, yep. It'll um, probably bring closer to six hundred. And, and that's where you're talking curious. about that 3D printing. Now guys are making 3D printed custom parts to customize these A scales, yep. which were yep. never available before. And there's some really neat stuff coming out in that in the world of 3D printing to to customize toys. I have a yes. guy so, in for selfish reasons. I'm wondering what that uh, Showtime Matchbox Turbine mod in the bottom shelf on top of that pink box is is worth because I got one. But um, not that that matters. What's interesting to me in this image is that uh, the dual 1206 Wheatlands double yep. up in two plus two. I mean, that's, I've never seen one of those made. That's really, that's a really cool piece. It's hard to believe that people actually had those to farm with though. I mean, that was a common yeah. thing like out in the Western States. Hmm. Pretty neat. Justin, I think Eve needs that, uh, that pink one eighth scale. Uh, she's got a pink 856 pedal tractor. I think she'd enjoy a lot more than that. <laughs> right there. If I won the lottery, ba boom. Yeah, I want I want that 1206, the, the real one, not the mini one. Oh, I love you know, that. It, it's kind of crazy to think that the pair of those might bring close to 60 grand. Yep. Or more. Yep. So and you Charles, have to... that actually uh, that uh, twelve oh six, the the full size one, is actually set up for uh, farm full stock. In it. Yeah, that's what I thought. I have no, so what, much... That's the eight twenty six, isn't it? No, it's the twelve oh six. He the eight twenty six. Oh, okay. They actually use that one around there quite a bit. That was what we used to load tractors and pull stuff in and out when we were getting ready for the other auctions. So I wonder what what the horsepower would be like on that factory. What were they? Ryan, like 130 or so, something like that. I think so they were like, one, they got, were like one, 112, but I think they were okay. underrated factory, yeah. But if it's got a bigger pump, lines, injectors, and a turbo, it's probably pushing close to 300, I would assume. Yep, yeah, easy. That'd be super easy to do. And Cortland, I'm with you on that, man. White demos rock. So, Justin, what are you working on right now? Um, and Jason um, Rack, you're right. You do need that mini 1206. <laughs> well, Ryan's probably seen this, but I built. I've been working on some of these 64 scale toys. Uh, these are those kits offered by JNS Customs. So this was this was their big country John Deere kit. I just painted it up. Like, who owns it now? Jason Rowan. Okay, it's the old former wrapped up tractor, but yep. I don't know. I just been tinkering with a couple of them. They're pretty man. They're once again these are completely 100% 3D printed. You just got to paint them up, but man, they're just they're cool as all get out. This was I built did this one up like Dustin Zumbel's Pure Country. This just something different. I don't know. And I like then uh, built one up like Thurman's Canical Bull. These are these kits are like twenty five bucks, and they come with decals, all the tires. Basically, all you could do is paint them and put them together. Like these, oh. of course, I I made my own decals though. I but, have two uh, hey, are you uh, are you three D modeling the tractors for those, or are you just going off of pictures? He uh the Sylvester, uh the guys that own JNS Customs, Sydney and uh, gosh darn it, Josh is his other his brother's name. They're doing all the modeling. They're printing the kits. They're selling them. I just bought the kits from them and put them together myself. So I don't, I'm not getting into that. I just wanted to do a couple for myself just because it looked like fun. But, so, uh, B, where are you getting the tires? Are you 3D printing the tires then too? Nope. They come in the kit. It's a, it's a hundred percent complete kit. All you gotta do is paint it, put it together. 
but the I think the tires are uh, Chuck Stefan is making the tires because they're pro pullers. Yeah, I think you're right. Not, I think it is Chuck. Yep. yep. So Chuck's supplying the tires for them, and then, and that's what's cool is uh, Joss and Sydney. They're actually they have their own 3D printer, and they're making this stuff at their house. So none of it's mass. You know, it's it's all done in house. So that's pretty cool. But uh, as far as what I'm really working on, uh, I'm building some more mechanical bulls for Thurman Senior. Uh, I got a couple others in the work. I'm going to keep that kind of hush hush for now. One for the raffle for the Miracle Power Pole coming up in June. Kind of got. I know what something... it is. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of got something big you planned. You could have picked a better one. What? I said you couldn't have picked a better one than that one. Well, that's why I picked that because it, it's gonna it's gonna go well with the cause and everything. Yeah. But uh, we're gonna do something different with that raffle this year. It, it, it's so I'm excited about it. But we're not supposed to be talking about that right now. Anyway, we'll talk about other stuff. But stay tuned. Those are basically the main things I'm working on. But big thing this week is we go in to have baby on Thursday. So no more toy building for a while. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so we had the auction in Sioux Falls uh, Saturday night during the toy show, and there was a guy from Kansas sitting in the front row whose wife went into labor in Kansas <laughs> while he was sitting at the toy auction in Sioux Falls. Oh, my Thank goodness. You. But he said she got there, and they sent her back home that she still had a couple days to go. So, And it was an all-out ice storm, so I don't know if he made it back to Kansas. Oh, yet. my. So, well, he's so got a heck of a story, story to tell. tell. Yeah. yeah. No, we're we're going in and she's getting induced Thursday morning, so we're kind of scheduled. <laughs> so, do you know what you're having or no? No, healthy baby's all we're asking. So there you go. The good Lord will bless us. So you'll be the oh, first sure. to know, though, Ryan. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> what do you What do you think it's going to be? Um. I don't know. You do pretty good with Team Girl Dad. Oh, shoot. I don't need another girl. <laughs> <laughs> he went from, oh, I hope it's healthy to, I don't need another girl. No. Somebody somebody said the other day, two girls can take over the farm, too. So, you know. It's true. Long, long as it, she or he is healthy, I, I'm, I'm happy either way. So. Oh, agreed. One million percent. Yeah. I had a buddy that... Uh, He's like, I don't, I don't really want to know the sex. So she left the ultrasound on the table and it was on there for like a couple months. And one day he was sitting at the table and he finally looked down and realized that like the sex of the baby's on the ultrasound. <laughs> so yeah, then he found out then it wasn't a surprise anymore. So yeah, I don't know. It's been fun not knowing. We didn't find out with Eve either. So how old she now? She's three and a half. Wow. Yeah. Getting sassy. Takes after her mama, huh? Well, I'll go in the house and she'll tell me, Dad, go back to the shop and work on toys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. but So, Ken, what, what's the most exciting piece off this auction that, you know, that you got ties to? You know, um, well, obviously, you know, the 1206, the menu at 1206. Yeah. Or, everybody's favorite that was the first thing you saw when you walked in the museum was the mini 1206 um you know as far as the from the toy end of it on this one um probably the big peter belt with the, the, with yeah. the sled is i mean that's like i said it's one we've never never had before so we look forward at? to seeing stuff i look forward to seeing stuff i've never seen or sold before yeah and where's that at there's that white pete with the uh with the bower belt it was big oh. setup got yeah. the green sled Yep. Uh, yeah, seven forty one, lot seven forty one. Do you, Do you know how many of those were built, Ken? I'm not one hundred percent. Fifty. Fifty. Okay. Yeah, and this one's serial number twenty three. Okay. But no box for I do got the box for the sled. No box for the yeah. semi. Um, so they they built fifty total, or fifty actually got like sent out because you know one of those at least had to get broke somewhere. Well, I would bet more than one of them. I think they yeah. probably built fifty total. Um, okay. So I, who knows how many are still left? Yeah. I've only I've seen one of those up, you know, in person before, and it, it, it's, you know, it's impressive. They they did a good job on them. Yep. Hey, Jason, go back up. Sure. Is it missing the left side mirror? 
it's there. It's just not on it. Okay. Okay. So a guy like you can glue it back on. If I glue it on, it looks like my third grader did it. So I just leave it for the next guy. Hey, I've glued my fingers together before, so don't feel bad. <laughs> yep, that's a pretty cool item. Yep. But anybody that wants to bid, um, to bid on our website, just up at the top where it says become a member, uh, you just click on become a member. We got a short form you fill out. You just pick a ID and password like you'd have on eBay. Name, address, phone number, and email is all we really ask for. Then you're in our system. Click register for auction. We'll get you checked in. Um, we do do shipping. We got full-time shipping department. Uh, unless it says in there too fragile to ship. Um, so, but we can do we can do shipping on pretty much anything. Do you do you not like to ship some things though? I mean, do you try yeah. to talk people out of it? Yeah, we do put it in the in there like that big pulling tractor sled. Since we don't yeah. have a box for the semi, you just you can't risk it. Yep, because um, so. usually the insurance just throws you for loops trying to get any money for that stuff. It does, and I've got two guys that work for me full time shipping. They do a terrific job, um, but it's just the chance you take, and you don't know what monkey you're going to get at the post office yep. or UPS either. So you got to take that into effect too. But everything's now in Wakanda. It's all at our facility. We're in southeastern South Dakota. Uh, nothing's left in Avoca anymore. Um, so. And Has you the property know been sold people. yet or no? Uh, yeah, it got sold this summer. Back in, I think, July, they closed on it. And actually, Jerry had built a new shed and um, uh, had had his stuff in there, um, but he didn't get to enjoy it very long. Is the you, tractor you, still you, up you, on the pole? Uh, yeah, the guy that bought the building was keeping it up there. Awesome. Oh, that's cool. That's how easy it is to register, kids. That Now you're a member, so just click on home. And then click on the green button that says register for auction. And register once, you're good for both days. Type in the ID and password. Now, Ken, make sure you check his bank account. I will. I will. <laughs> Bruce, Bruce is getting me something for Christmas. My username is my uh, email. Nope, you're that uh, you signed up as beer money something or other. I think that's what it said. Now just go to the Bob and verify everything that you didn't change nothing. <clears throat> and you should show up on my end. There you are. I got you checked in, and now you can spend all the money you want. <laughs> <laughs> Doug says, "Looks like I get to go shopping." <laughs> hey, Jason, there's another uh, foreplay on there if you want a second one. Is there? Yep. I think I'd be better off buying these things on the auctions and drinking in Bowling Green and Gordyville and getting sucked into auctions. <laughs> and there's more than just toys too, as far as the pulling tractor stuff. There's a big box of old uh, NTPA pulling hats and a lot of T-shirts. I think Jerry bought three t-shirts every time he went to a poll. And uh, so there's all that. Joyce gave me all that. She said, get rid of that stuff too, Ken. Yeah. And um, belt buckles. And so if, if not in the toys, you want something small, you know, you can get in on that stuff too. There you go, Jason. You need a pair of shoes back here. There you go. Those look good. You could wear them down to Jamaica or whatever. There's a pair of, is it Lambretta? Is that how you say that, Ryan? Uh, wood shoes. Oh, the, oh, the Lombada. Lombada, yes. There's a pair of Lombada wood shoes. Huh. Brian Thurston's watching. Brian, I think you need those. So He's kind of a big uh, Lombada fan. He likes that Ken, tractor. Ken and Ryan will have to answer this, but how many years do you, did you all know how many years Jerry had been collecting this stuff? He started back when he was still a dealer and had sheds full of it and kind of scattered around town and different sheds. And then in 2010, I think is when he built the museum. Um, okay. It was open about, about 10, a little over 10 years. And okay. so how long did he run the dealership? 
Uh, his family started, there's a poster in there. I think in 1945, his dad was, wow. dealer, and he That's came home cool. from the military and Jerry joined them. And, uh, they had three dealerships at one time and then they got down to two. They had, a uh, Avoca and Atlantic, and then they sold out to Titan back in like 2010 or some 2012, something like that. Oh, they sold to that Titan machinery. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Titan oh, machinery. okay. I yep. didn't know that. This could be very, very, very dangerous. If you're in the market, you could actually get the model of pumpkin and the real thing itself. Is the <laughs> really? pumpkin up for sale now? Yes, it is. Oh, that's the other thing I was going to tell you, Ryan. And I don't know, I might have told you this before, but you knew that the demon came to Missouri, right? Yes, I did. But I can't remember the guy's name that bought it. But it's in southern part of Missouri, and I think it's supposed to run uh, Missouri State down there. So Ken, these are all these are all sixteens, right? These so the beginning of the sale is when you get through the toys. When you get towards the end, he's got a lot of sixty four too, and we've got it marked in the title. So you just kind of got to pay attention what you're doing. Uh, but he's got a lot of the matching sixty fourth, which there's a lot of those that are probably harder to find than the sixteen mm -hmm. scale, ones. Mm -hmm. and a lot of the semis too. He's got a lot of the semis that match. And it's amazing what some of that stuff will bring. Uh, we've sold some 64 scale toys for a thousand, two thousand bucks yep. now. Wow. Yep. Wow. There you go, Jason. That's what you need, buddy. What's that? More 64 scale stuff because they don't take up as much shelf room so you can buy more. That's right. And that's why it's gotten popular. I'm, I'm convinced. I'm thinking of my dad right now for Christmas. Jason, scroll up. Buy him that red four wheel drives tractor or uh, tractor book that's in the frame right there. I'm one of those. One of these? Yeah. Okay. Boy, that was easy, Ryan. Yeah, you know, well, he's got to win it first. Well, you told him to buy it. Well, but I also have the serial number, the, the same serial number for the regular red for uh, the regular red tractors. Okay, Ken, so there's an eight. And each of the ones you said a little more rare? Well, they didn't, they were a limited production. They're not that old. I mean, they're within, oh, I think that one you just clicked on is Pennsylvania Farm Show from just a couple of years ago, but they probably only made a hundred of them. Okay. What he was saying earlier, Jason, is not many people collected those when they first kind of come out, but now okay. people really pick them up quick, you know. It, if you're set up to collect a scale, they're fine. They're kind of big and bulky, yeah. but if you got a room full of them, they're really cool. If you've got two of them in with a collection of 16 scale, they're kind of a pain. But it's this kind of like a, collecting yeah, pedal this would be a 16, right? Right, exactly. Yep. That's a 16. Okay. That'd be 16. Yep. If it doesn't say anything, assume it's 16. Gotcha. So next Monday night's when it's going to be hot, hot to trot on this? Uh, Monday nights, belt buckles and manuals. That's the first catalog. There's about 1,300 pieces. That's why we split it over two nights. Uh, so it wasn't quite so much. And trying to figure out what to sell what night and what to sell the other was a little bit of my stress. But um, So the first nights is belt buckles and manuals and memorabilia. And then day two is the, the toys and the real tractors and then some other miscellaneous stuff just to kind of finish filling in the, filling in the sale. Ryan, when do we have um, Ken and those guys coming on? Whenever you're ready to have them. Okay. There, I mean, you guys, this is this is incredible. If I would say most of Jerry's T-shirts he wore once or twice, and I mean they were just he had a closet full of them. Wow. There's a T-shirt that I have in my closet. Hey, Ryan, we need to tell Richardson about that. He needs to buy maybe some of them lots for their quilt. True. That, you know, if you could get 10 shirts for, you know, $20, $30, that wouldn't be a bad gig. That might be a pipe dream, though. Yeah, I don't know. Ken, can you answer that question on the screen? Yeah, pulling tractors are all Tuesday night, week from tomorrow. Those are cool. I thought those were really neat. String of Harvester Christmas lights. That's oh, cool yeah. I didn't untangle them when we took the picture. I just kind of gave it the old Chevy Chase look and 
set them on the table. <laughs> that would look cool in the trailer. Very. So Ken, after after this auction, what what's your next kind of rare, cool stuff that you might be coming up? Do you kind of have any ideas? Um, you know, we've got toy auctions. We do a toy auction pretty much every week anymore. Um, we book about a full year out. Um, mm -hmm. We got a, a great old toy auction the following week. Uh, Rick Wolf out of Erie, Illinois, and then a lot of signs and stuff the next day too. That's for uh, Alan and Linda Goodwin. They're out of. Um, uh, Platt, uh, down by St. Joe, Missouri. Um, okay. We've got their collection. Uh, really neat. We've actually got some uh, pulling tractor, pedal tractors coming up in uh, the end of March. Uh, they're on that sale. A um, lot of stuff coming up. March and April, we're super busy. We take a little time off during the summer once our kids are out of school. That's kind of our slower time uh, yeah. by design. And then starting in September, we literally do a toy auction every week. And uh, we got a real big one coming up that uh, all you guys will know his name, but I'll wait till I get all that here. Then maybe next fall we'll get on and talk about that again. I gave I gave Ryan the down low on that earlier, but uh, uh, you it's guys, a guy that you guys will all know. So, so like if somebody you know say say I wanted you to sell one of the toys that I built, how does that go about working? What's the details? You know, the best thing is, is uh, just contact us and we'll see if we've got room to get it into an auction. Mm -hmm. Most of what we do is one owner auctions anymore. Yeah. I don't do a lot of consignment. Assignment what we did in yeah. Sioux Falls this last weekend with the toy show is kind of an open consignment. And I say that a little tongue in cheek because I kind of sell for the same guys over and over every year. Yeah. And then we always do one Black Friday too, the day after Thanksgiving. That's kind of one of our premier auctions. So yeah. if it's one really good piece, I do what I can to slide it in. Yep. If you walk in the door with 10 collector's edition tractors, I'm probably going to say, gonna you know, say try somebody else. I just, yeah, no exaggeration. We have 25,000 pieces on inventory right now. We're trying to work through. That's it. That's good though. Let's go. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. So, and if you can see behind me, anybody that has any outboard motor signs that they want to get rid of, that's kind of my thing. <laughs> of pulling, I, so so I do you have any actual cool. engines? <laughs> yeah, I do. I got a few, um, but they got to be really, really nice. I've got a beautiful Scott Atwater, really nice Mercury. I'm really after a really nice Oliver engine. Oliver made uh, outboard motors for a short time. And, really? Uh, I've got I've got a couple of really good Oliver signs. I've got two original stands. I have one okay Oliver motor, but I'd like a really, really pristine one. What, what years would they have built those? Um, the Oliver built motors from like 1953 to 1958 or nine, something like that. Hmm. So, have you called Sherry yet? Um, <laughs> we visited before. Yes. So I was going to say, if you want a motor, I mean, I, I got to think she's probably your best connection to one. Uh, one of my really good Oliver, uh, outboard motor signs I got off her dad's estate auction this last year when Polks did that. Either that or Ryan Herx, isn't he a big Oliver guy? He yeah, is, but he I don't is. think he's got any outboards. <laughs> well, no, but he might have a connection. <laughs> that's that's true. That would be worth a phone call. Ryan is an outboard. You can quote me on that. <laughs> hey, he's just cool like us. He likes his bush light. <laughs> well, Unpopular Ken, opinion. Let's wrap this baby up so we can move on and promote Cowtown Showdown. Thanks for coming on tonight. Um, oh, this was fun. I, I really did enjoy it. Thanks, guys, had, for having uh, me, and it was good visiting with you all. Tell your wife I'm sorry I kept you uh, 20 minutes past it, her. It's all right. She'll she'll get over it. Two options, get over it or die mad. Right. So. Huh. Positive outlook. That's I right. Like, I like where your head is. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, yeah. Ken. Well, that was cool, fellas. There's a lot of cool stuff on that auction. Yeah, yeah I can't is. It. I'm going to do a little snooping on there later. I'm going to try to get that yellow one from my dad. That looked cool in his basement. So. All right, I'm going to message. I'll message Summers, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, sounds good. Well, Ken, we'll talk I'll you guys get to your evening. Y'all have hey, a good one. Hey, good luck with that baby. Hey, thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. See you, bud. See you, guys. Thanks, Justin. See you, buddy. Um, we'll talk about DuCoin a little bit while uh, Charles and I will, while uh, we're getting everybody else on. But first time that polling's been back since 2010. Yes, the crowd was light. They knew the crowd was going to be light. 
Um, a couple of the classes didn't have big numbers in it, but I, I'm telling you, Charles, <clears throat> Donnie Sullivan came up to me, Jeff Hurt, Chase Richardson, a lot of big name pullers and said, this place is awesome. Yeah. Um, and it was well run. Uh, I mean, it really was, it was a, yes, I was disappointed by the crowd as well. Um, so, I mean, we'll, we'll, I'm going to try to help them with that as much as I can next year, but I'm telling you great facility to have a pull. Everybody got a pit inside. The weather was beautiful. Tucker and the guy gang built another awesome track. I mean, it was, it was great. It was great, Charles. I mean, from, yeah, I agree. Like I'd never been there. I'd seen videos of it from when Clint had done shows there back, whatever it was 10 years ago, but I mean, high ceilings and, Yep. You know, you can run alcohol in there and it's not a problem. Track was tight. It was good. It was tough. And usual, you know, Clint and Joe Hurd just shuttling people around and making stuff happen. Yeah. It was a good program. I was really, really impressed. And I, you know, Brad Holzar said that we're going to do it again next year. And by golly, I'm going to be there. It's uh, it's worth going to. Beautiful yeah, building. It really is. I mean, the way that it set up slick, they brought all the pullers in. <clears throat> they took them out the left side across the scale went outside and the diesel tractors could start up and warm up outside that was great it was really nice out as you know charles yeah it was warm back, back yeah. in and, and away we went it's really really cool i mean i really enjoyed it it was a great time it's a long ways down there charles as you know um it was yeah. eight hours for us but it's um, worth the trip man i'll do oh, it yeah. i'll do it again 100 really, so we just got to work on getting a bigger crowd <clears throat> there next year and you know uh we'll have to let brad and tucker and those guys pick the classes maybe that will that'll get a little bit more, but I think after a first year, I mean, that track was awesome. That track was yeah. awesome. So I heard two wheel drive had Louisville weight on the front ends. If they, yeah, they absolutely had to, that was, yes. uh, it was mean. So did you, so Scott Worth, Whitworth, and I, I've confirmed this. He has two fractured vertebrae. Is that what I yes. heard? Okay. Yeah, that's so, correct. Yes, I saw that's him correct. come back to the pole Friday night and then I saw him Saturday I was I starting to interview him Friday night before he pulled, and then a, mo a mo two wheel drive mod started up. So we only got a couple minutes into our interview because you and I talked about that, Charles. I need to start doing more of that. And then it got, you know, it's loud in there. Man, mini rods inside, and holy crap. Yeah. It was. They, they raised the roof. Insane. Definitely raised the roof. Um, you know, it's how hard of a track, a tough a track it is. You know, in the finals Saturday night, you know, Dale Nelson wins the darn thing and in the last six inches you know spits a rod out through the block i mean that's how hard he was pushing to win that deal so i mean it's it's a kill track and you're gonna earn it actually jason the sand pile was a traditional sand pile but with the tarp it made it look more straight up and down i actually like the tarp idea because it does all the stuff doesn't go into the blowers and yeah, that was a nice touch. Um, I didn't see, you know, obviously I, I missed uh, Friday and Saturday afternoon, um, but Saturday night was there and like that as a touch. And the sled settings from Bungert's was was spot on. Yeah. You know, in the minis, test pull was was Tyler Slaw won the thing and he was eight inches from the base of that pile. So, I mean, got it right, right off the hop. And uh, yeah, it's a good program. It was it was a great event. So I really, when you guys see that one next year, if you can get to it, please do. Um, great facility and everybody, everybody had a great time. The fifty eight hundred pound mods put on a good show. Yeah, they did. You could hear them when they had to get on the brakes. Those front ends. I mean, they they were skying as well. Um, it was really whoever had the best straight pass. And then uh, Phipps won Friday night the uh, two wheel drive trucks, and it was an awesome hook. It was so good to see them. The old cornfield cruiser. It was a good time. There's and there's a lot of stuff I don't normally get to see, Charles. You know, some of the two wheel drive trucks from the south a little bit, and some eighty five limited pros I don't get to see as much. So it was really a good time. Yeah, so. a lot of a lot of the ITPA stuff. I you know I'm not I'm not from down there, so there's a lot of iron down there that I know certainly I know about, but I don't get the opportunity to see on a regular basis. And and that was really cool to watch those guys run. And yeah, the mods, man. Um, I I uh, I'm pretty brave with choosing my my photography spots, and there was one of them that uh, took a. They were it, they were heading straight at us and and took a hop and I, uh, I tackled Christina and ran and, and Shane Hunt was standing with us too and he chose to run as well and, um, I don't get nervous really, being trackside like that but that was one where it's like oh we're not gonna stand here and take this there's, <laughs> there's, there's there's concrete and steel behind us there's nowhere to run except to go sideways and so we did but 
yeah, they, they put on a hell of a yeah. show. And, um, and it gave and it gave you a good uh, opportunity to tackle Christina. Let's uh, yeah, let's well, make sure know. the record states that. Yeah, oh, no. there's that's true. But even just if she would even if even if she would have dropped the camera, I wouldn't have cared because that was one of those ones where I just was like, holy shit, we can't stand here. Ron Stone, it's time to talk Cow Town Showdown. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Your hair looks really good tonight, Ron. You like it? You like it? You showered and everything. <laughs> Got a new haircut, so I yeah. like it. Charles, are you Where's the jealousy factor right now on the hair? Um, it's it's pretty high. I'm I'm about ready to start growing mine back because uh, I'm I'm about over this. So uh, yeah, it's time. Charles, it's thick and lustrous too, buddy. Yeah, I'm I'm coming for you. Give me give me two months. <laughs> give me two months. Got a little salt in there though. I mean, <laughs> how's everybody tonight? Good. Good, Ron. How are you? Good. How are you? Great, guys. We're actually out here at the uh, the Buckner Farms. Or uh, Summers Farms out in Buckner, uh, Bunny Farm. Is that the Actually, new shop? Uh, just wrapping Is that the up. New shop? What was that? Are you out in the new shop, Ron? Yes. Yep. He he, he needs to get some better Wi-Fi signal out here. We're using the hotspot on my phone, and it's working for now. But um, yeah, we're out here at the Bunny Farm wrapping up Cowtown meeting. Probably the last one before. Uh, we go next Wednesday night, so we're looking forward to it. Well, we've been sharing, you know, you've been sharing a lot of videos to Beer Money Pulling Team. It's it's doing well. This is the event, you know, this in Keystone. Hey, Summers. <laughs> hey. Um, yeah, this is the event that, thing. you know, you and Keystone two years ago, Ron, were happening, and then the old, the government said no moss, and um, you guys still yeah. went ahead, and can you kind of talk about that and maybe some evil memories, but yet still something you'll probably <laughs> never forget for the rest of your life. Some stress, probably some of these gray hairs on my head. Uh, <laughs> I can attribute to that that Thursday morning of uh, Cowtown. Of course, we started Wednesday night. Uh, we started this actually in 2019. And in 2019, we uh, uh, started our, our show on Thursday night. Well, we decided since we had such a big response, that we try to start out on Wednesday night. We started out on Wednesday night in 2020. Uh, Thursday morning, the mayor of Kansas City declared a state of emergency and shut everything down. Um, by that afternoon, we you know we tried to reach as many pollers as we could, tell them what was going on. Um, they gave us few options. They basically gave us a couple of options to uh, shut it down and they would give us our money back for the facility well we pretty much already spent all of our money at that point so that really didn't matter to us so we kind of threw it out there to the pullers all the pullers that we had talked to wanted to pull so they gave us the option of we could have the pull but no crowd uh, no spectators they didn't want anybody paying admission to get in there so that's what we did um you know the live stream did well but uh, uh you know it, it, it doesn't replace the butts in the seats uh, for the revenue that you really need to put on an event like this. Um, so we're hoping, you know, we didn't have it last year. Restrictions were just way too many. Uh, I think they restricted, was it 20%? Ken, I don't even remember what it was. I think Something it was, like that. It's supposed to have a thousand people. Yeah, it was less than a thousand people. And that includes all the people that are working, the pullers, everybody on the track, people in concessions and everything. And, and they had to wear a mask and the contact tracing and nobody wanted that. <laughs> We shut it down for 2020 and actually this year we really didn't get to go ahead till after the first of the year um so that's kind of why we got the late start this year because you know in december you know omicron was the new variant that was you know going to wipe us all out so uh, that died down pretty quickly actually and then we got to go ahead to go ahead and do it so we jumped in jumped in head first here to try to get it done for 2022. Ron, as a promoter, you kind of get that feeling that if an event's going to be big, or you know, you you know what I'm talking about, right? Like this, the the overall buzz and stuff like that. Like, where's your mindset at right now? What are you feeling? And you know, I'm not trying to be a fortune teller, but how are you and Ken and everybody sure. feeling about this? Um, I feel like we're going to have the biggest crowd we've ever had here. To be honest with you, um, just judging by some of the events that they've had at Hale the last couple of months. 
Um, they've been selling out some events that don't normally sell out. Um, it kind of tells me people are ready, really ready to get out and start enjoying life again. Um, I know Canada, uh, get blown up on a daily basis by, with people asking questions about tickets. Um, I mean, you can put as many postings out there as you want about tickets and information, and you're still going to get a lot of a lot of questions of how much, uh, for what classes and what session. So it's, uh, I think, Ken, you get blown up as much as I do yeah, about questions awesome. about that. So, um, but yeah, I, I feel like we're going to have a good crowd uh, throughout. I mean, I, I feel like Friday and Saturday is potential for sellouts. Good. That's what we like to see because we all like to see a big crowd. So I was just down in DeCoin last weekend and first time they've had that event, you guys, in 12 years. And obviously the crowd was way was light. They were hoping for a little bit more Saturday night. But uh, overall, I think they left kind of like Kansas City, Ron, that first year. Nobody really knew what to expect. And everybody left. They're right. like, wow, I'm going to be back. And then I'll be back here. And it turned into a COVID year. Or no, did you get two full ones in? To no, no. Well, so it was one just year, more than one yeah. session. Okay. We had the inaugural, then we had the the, the Corona Cowtown Showdown. So, yeah, that 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 was that's been our history so far. So yeah, that first event, you know, we didn't even have TV advertising. Right. You know, we simply couldn't even afford it that first year. So there were a lot of people in the area that didn't even know it was going on as much as we tried to get the word out. So uh, well, we didn't even come up with the idea until Christmas, though. So. <laughs> See, I, I, I have a pretty good feeling this year um, that, you know, it's, there's going to be a lot of people here. And I feel like uh, there's more buzz in the air about it. There's there's more people I know that are messaging me, uh, whether through text, through Messenger, through Facebook, uh, wanting information, how to get tickets, where to get tickets, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So if anybody has a I feel there's for a little I'm sorry, Ron. If anybody has any questions for Ron or Ken about Cowtown, just put cowtownpool.com in the comments. I got the website up now, Ron. What would you like me to um, to or maybe to put on the screen? What was that here? What would you like me to put up on the screen to show people like tickets or what do you want me to show? Uh, probably the biggest thing to, I think, the message to get out to people that want tickets. Um, if you want tickets early, you have to go to Ticketmaster.com. Now, of course, there is a fee at Ticketmaster.com. Um, we do have an all sessions ticket, uh, which gets you in all six sessions. It's a hundred bucks plus the service fees. plus the service fees through Ticketmaster. If you want to buy tickets without a service fee, you'll have to buy them at least a day before the event you want to go to, the session you want to go to, um, and you can buy those at the the municipal auditorium box office in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. So obviously, if you're not from Kansas City, you're probably not going to do that. But if you have a relative here, you can go down there and buy all the tickets you want right there at the box office at the municipal auditorium with no fees. Uh, if you buy tickets at the door, there's an extra $2 charge the day of the show. Um, and like I've been telling everyone, do I anticipate the show selling out? Well, of course, we want the shows to sell out. But we cannot guarantee there will be tickets at the door if you wait till the day of the show. Well, Cody um, and I are going to go down, Ron, and buy all the tickets and then sell them, like scalp them outside, like the Kansas City Chief games. Yep. Hey, that'd be all right. Well, <laughs> you know, I actually seen there was a, a a ticket agent that actually bought up some tickets and had them for sale on the internet already. So I think that may be a good sign. That is a good sign. That is a good sign. <laughs> so, so what you got up there, Jason, is our uh, trackside seating the boxes and there's still quite a few of those available. If anybody wants to get in on them, that's a pretty good deal there. So 10 chairs per box. Yes. Yeah. Can they order that from Ticketmaster too? No, the tick, the boxes you'll have to go through Ken or myself on those. Looking good. And that's, that particular that's, that's tickets for all the sessions, right guys? It is. Yes, yeah. 10 tickets for every session. Okay. If you buy a box. 
They're yep. priced according to where they're at along the track, too. The right. more towards the end, they're a little higher, and the start is a little cheaper. Nope that did that make sense? Um, are entries closed? Mark Ulmer wants to know. Depends on what class, Mister Ulmer. Uh, I think he's thinking two wheel drive mod. I think Ron, knowing Ulmer, so Mark Ulmer. Um, I will pass on a little information of some classes that we actually scratched. Um, diesel super stock, we scratched that class. Uh, pro stock tractor, we scratched it. And super farm, we scratched that class. It would have been a first year for that one. Um, so many people are waiting on parts. You know, we've had a few pullers actually drop out in the last couple of days because parts that were supposed to have been in the last week still aren't here um we all know this story all too well right now with the supply chain uh, issues so but i will tell you that other classes like uh, light limited pro stock we're pushing 40 entries three sessions of those uh and a, a championship round saturday night pro stock four before close to 30 uh limited pro stock uh just under 30, four one tractors. There'll be 14 of those in two sessions and a championship round Saturday night. So there's no shortage of vehicles, light limited super stocks. We added a session of those in a championship round this year. Uh, two years ago, we had those on Saturday afternoon and we had 16, 18, 19 of those tractors. And we thought those guys need we need to split them up and give them a championship round. So we did, did just that this year. Um, we've got uh, 18 of those light limited super stocks. Um, those are coming from all over. Pro Farm, we did the same thing. We had 19 Pro Farms in 2020 in one round. Uh, we split it up, two qualifiers and a championship round Saturday afternoon, uh, Pro Farm tractors. Um, we've got Light Mod, uh, Light Pro, Super mod two wheel drive, mod two wheel drive. Um, we got some MSTPA classes, ninety five hundred pro field. Mod four wheel drive. We got mod four wheel drive. Um, diesel pickups, three O diesel pickups, two six diesel pickups. Um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a good year. If you guys have never been there, it's a great venue, plenty of parking, awesome indoor pitting. It's it's a great facility, good track. The announcer sucks, but the rest of it's great. So. Oh, Jason, I didn't. Are you announcing this year? <laughs> 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 well played, Ron. Very well played. Yeah, well, you got it. You got it. Can you tell me? <laughs> so, um, okay. We've been working with with Tony here tonight, the guy that does all the takes care of all the parking when everybody comes in, and so when everybody comes in the pit gate, they're going to stop and wait for directions on where to go. That way we can keep the parking really organized again. They did a great job the last time we had it, and uh, we've tweaked on that a little bit. But if we don't have everybody come in where they're supposed to, then it gets very, very hard to get around. Ken, is there any way we could just look at Trish and then you could talk? Is that possible? <laughs> hey, we got Kenzie here tonight. You can look at Wayne, Wayne's bride. I saw enough of her on Snapchat over the last week or so. so. Yeah, she, she's at my house tonight. She didn't want to come hang out with us. I have a video of her dancing with Cody. Can I play that real quick, Ron? Sure, yeah. At her wedding, let's see her. Lane, Lane Hardy comments, goes, where was that at? All that dang music, Ron. You, it's so <laughs> I always get in trouble with music. No, that's, that's you, buddy. That's not me. <laughs> hey, I don't want anybody to lose focus, but um, did anyone happen to notice the class that Mark was asking if registration was closed for? Oh. Because I'm that's kind of important. That's Mark's way of burying the lead. Yeah, Mark, <laughs> I think we could make a spot for you there if you really wanted to pull. You have his number, I think, Stone. Yeah, I've got your number, Mark. Call me. Call. <laughs> yeah, we actually uh, pushed that class to Saturday night, too. We used to have it on Saturday afternoon. We pushed that. that Thomas uh, Kimmon needs a ride. Okay, we got that. 
Thomas, I, I'm sure if you log on to Uber, there, well, maybe there's not an option that's for a hauler, but you know, make do. Summers is Lane there? Yeah, he is. Tell him to pop. Oh, he's outside, outside on the phone. Huh? He went outside. He got a phone call. Okay. He's probably wearing his headset. He wore it for the whole honeymoon. So entire honeymoon, I'm sure. Um, Brett Shorf Heidi is asking a question. I think we probably should address. Uh, we talked about it tonight. 8,500 uh, limited pro stock or light limited pro stock. That class um, PPL allows a recast head um, and Outlaws allows their old precision box turbocharger, which isn't allowed in PPL. And Outlaws don't allow the recast head. We're going to allow both sets of rules. If you run Outlaw, you can run your old precision slotted charger was a box turbo. And if you run PPL, you can run a recast head. Brandon says, I'll beat the hell out of them Hemis. And pulloff.com is suddenly alive with commentary about what you just said, Ron. <laughs> yep. <laughs> sure <it is>. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All the anonymous name is in there. You got to love it. Uh huh. Was what? there and fan in the stands and yeah, the the ubiquitous was there. Yes, was there. <laughs> the most famous name in pulling <laughs> was there. So yeah, we thought we better address that. What better place to do it here since we've got the the hot mic? So. Um. Another thing, the Brandon, can you answer or Ron, can you answer that question for Brandon? Brandon, what's up with 7400 mod? Uh, well, we're having the class, Brandon. So he's already talking, got, he's already he's talking smack he's about beating the hell out of the Hemis. He better get that those three Chevys fired up and get up here. Hey, Lane, how did the entry? How did the entries look for that 7400 pound mod? Uh, we've got five right now in that 74 mod. Um, talking to a couple more guys about getting in there, but honestly, we have to kind of be careful on Saturday night um, with the fumes in there, the carbon monoxide. Um, we're hoping for good weather where we can just keep those doors wide open and the fans running. Um, but the fire marshal, you know, they, this facility itself, they told us to keep an eye on that this year. New fire marshals coming in and might not be as forgiving as the past fire marshal when the, the levels got up there and he, he allowed us a little more leeway. Uh, the new fire marshal may not give us that cushion. So we have to be careful. We've adjusted some of those final round participants in the gas and alcohol classes to a smaller number in the final round uh, to try to keep that down. So, um, I say, hopefully we'll have good weather. We just keep those doors open all night and it won't be a problem. So. Just explain to them it's methanol. It's a renewable fuel. Everything is fine. Right. Yes, it's very clean. Burn good. Breathe it right in. Um, Can we hook them up with some jerry juice? And <laughs> just, just, I mean, I mean, I'm just throwing out spitballing solutions. Uh, I don't know. Has anyone tried that? Uh, fuel... Um, VP fuel will be required fuel and water in three classes. Um, the four, one class limited pro stock, the 85 limited pro stock and the pro farm. Uh, the other classes that are diesel, um, you are subject to being checked and tested and your fuel must test between 30 and 150 on the dielectric meter. So hopefully that answers some questions as well. Will there be fuel and water available? And I think we decided there would be. We have a supplier that's going to bring some fuel and water. Um, give us a heads up if you're going to need some, if you know you're going to need some. That way we know that we have plenty here to, you know, to bring down there. We don't want to bring a whole truckload and not use any of it. So. Grease some palms, boys. It's the way of the world. 
I think we're referring back to the alcohol fumes there a little bit. Yeah, sure. Shore Fighty, are you coming out? Oh, yeah. Is he? Yeah, I'm sure he is. Oh, I hope so. When I went one to one less guy for you to sell a vacuum cleaner to. Yeah, Amy <laughs> Joe called me at 224 this past Saturday or Sunday morning. He said he wanted to circle you, it to uh, uh, a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, it was a good it was a good phone call. Nice. Sure fight he said in winter's circle at Duke Line, he was going to Cowtown, so Yep. Awesome. Good to hear. Yep, he signed up. So Jerry Yeah, said, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, get a bunch of people down here. We're we start next Wednesday night. we we'll be putting uh we'll have a track by this time uh, a week from now. I feel like there's good chatter. I mean, I really do, Ron. I'm not, I don't want you to be overconfident, but I just, I feel like there's good chatter, good momentum. Um, I know you guys know how to promote polls with local advertising and stuff. And obviously, there's a big city there. Kansas City's kind of a couple hundred thousand people there or so, right? Yep. Yeah. A couple, 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 couple three. Yeah. Couple three. Did you want to talk to Lane? He's in here now. I'd like to talk to Lane Aldridge, please. You want, you want to talk to Lane? I need to have Cody in here. Uh. What's up, Laner? What's going on? How was your honeymoon? Not bad. <laughs> yeah? Weather. Weather was nice here in Missouri while we were gone. Then we get back to snowy weather. That's about normal. Yep. So, Kenzie still loves you? Like, we're not going to do the whole annulment thing or anything like that? Or She's here. Her. No, I know, but I'm just having fun. So. Yeah. Even she's even still, after yeah, she stood on the hood of your truck. That's yeah. true love, buddy. I ain't gonna lie, that was that was more Brent Roberts' idea than mine. I was a little little frantic there for a minute. He goes, Ah, it'll be worth it for the picture. Even if we gotta have it repainted, it'll be fine. So that was about the end of that conversation. <laughs> we put her up there. I can hear that conversation <laughs> playing out. Oh yeah. He's like, we got it. We got it. it. This just has to happen. And he was right. It kind of did need to happen. That was awesome. I mean, it, it worked. It worked. I think Kenzie was feeling herself up there whenever she was on the hood. I think she was thinking she was somebody. Hey, it was pretty legit. I'm not going to lie. It was pretty legit. Yeah. No, we just wanted to check in. You guys are kind of like the... The celebrities of the pulling world now, you know, get engaged on the track and, you know, fall out there. And it's just kind of a neat deal. He married into the pro stock family. Well played, Mr. Aldrich. I'm proud of you there. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, yeah. yeah. No, it's all good. No, we're going to give you crap no matter what you do. But we we actually do like you and enjoy you. And your wife's pretty awesome as well. So, so martinis are just yeah. not your thing, huh? <laughs> yeah, no. I, I I feel that. Uh, no, I'll pass on that. <laughs> I mean, I suppose we could. I mean, we could dump Jerry juice into a martini glass. That, yeah, that sounds out. more. That sounds more the style there. <laughs> I figured you'd be on board with that. <laughs> by by the way, I got a compliment one more time. The the Kara and I mentioned, or we were talking about this just the other day. Um, pretty sure that's the best wedding food we've ever had. And I think Cody would agree. Yeah. I mean, that was mainly, everybody said that wasn't, that wasn't supposed to be like the concern of the night. I mean, that was kind of my concern leading up to it. I was going to eat good that night. I did. You damn so. sure did. And so did we. And we thank you. No, not a problem. Glad to have y'all. I think Cody might have spent as much time. Out. He Cody spent more time on that dance floor than me. I I do know that. Just twice. That's it. Just twice. That's all right. She had no idea what she's doing. I was like, that's fine. Just follow. I'll lead. <laughs> what about what about the other one? <laughs> Same way. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn, just, just follow, throw her right under the bus. Good job, buddy. Hey, she's probably not watching. It's fine. <laughs> but I'll bet she still, gets still this clip later. Data for you on that one. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> nice timing. <laughs> I have. I have certain. 
I have certain pictures friend. queued up waiting for you guys. I got my famous white my knight there, the knight in shining armor. And then if Roos, if you get a little mouthy, I just put this up. I do that to Ron on Tuesday nights when he's not looking. So get a little Beavis and Butthead there. <laughs> I have to say the uh, the musical chairs deal that was entertaining. That that, that was, was very entertaining. I have never seen that. So they did a musical chairs, and uh, you had to the DJ called out, and you had to go get special items out of the crowd. Yeah. I've never seen that at a wedding. And and Ken Summers gave us his undershirt. He was <laughs> he had no shirt on. That's right. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, especially Vacation with what that, that undershirt right. said. They that called for awesome. an undershirt, and Ken just goes and rips off the the pearl snaps and pulls the undershirt off, and it was it was perfect timing. So if yeah, the mic's not on, I've what do you think Leroy's actually saying to Short Fighty? <laughs> oh, that would be fun. This could be one of those fun little comment things we do. So. What were you gonna say, Lane? No, I was just saying that I've been to a couple weddings where they did that with the with the oh. DJ and for him being for that that DJ crew, they do a good job. They're more they're more of like a planning. yeah, wedding planning crew, coordinator, DJ all in one. So money's worth there. So we left all them games and stuff up to them and just let them do their thing. So Kenzie won, so I guess no she's she's always gonna be right on that one. So, <clears throat> Lane, I hate to tell you this, but she was always always gonna be right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, put That's put Ron right. back on, Lane. We've had enough of your face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying you wanted to see my face again? Is that what you're saying? Oh God, no. Just no. We have to Kenzie. Yeah. 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 We have a commitment. The Beer Money Polling Team has a commitment to the Cowtown Showdown to put as many fans in the stands as possible. So we took a quick little publicity break there for the Aldriches, but now it's back to business. So if anybody's got any comments or questions about Cowtown, please type them in the comments before we let Ron go. And the hair is, I'm digging the new do, Ron. I look, that's nice. <laughs> Charles is going to grow Thank his you. out. He's very nice. Very nice. Cody, I don't think we've seen Cody without a hat on. Every once in a while. Every once in a while. You let the locks flow. That again. night is not tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Adam says, like I said last week, shows a lot easier than the eyes on Spotify. Yeah. You can listen to this tomorrow on audio <clears throat> on Spotify or iTunes, but you don't get to see our pretty faces. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Spoken like a true night, photographer who hides behind the camera, Adam, right? Bingo. There's Wait, a reason Ken we Summers all have expensive gear. Ken Summers has a, an admirer on here. Do you see that? I, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it's Just one wife of our watching admin. Ken Summers is a Yeah, it's one of our admins, if it comes up like that. So. One of your admins. Yep. Saturday night, Mark Almer. Okay. Hey, Ron, on the big Jason, stage. Jason Goody had a question if there was any extra weight for uh, smoke tubes. Uh, I don't think we've done that in the past, have we? A lot of extra weight. We have such a good track here. We don't need that any extra weight for smoke tubes. No, I don't think we've done that before. So the four ones weigh 95, not 97, Ron? Correct. You guys didn't weigh 97. Did you? Mm. Good question. We'll have to circle back on that one, guys. That's fine. That's, you that's did not that just say that, did you? I just Cut him off. Like Cut him off. Mentality. Cut him we'll off. He back. said that. Cut him off. I don't want to talk to him anymore. <laughs> Come on, he was wearing his promoter I had, hat. Remember, I have no idea what he was Tuesday, talking about. He wants to see viewers there. 
So if he yeah. buys some time for 24 hours, you know, that's a good strategy. Hey, Ron, I really feel like in when I was there that first year, we weighed 97. And I'm not trying to pick on you or stir up any controversy like Charles is. I'm just being legit. Steve Bosma correlates that. I'm not stirring up anything either. I just hate freaking oh, spokesperson oh, double speak garbage. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Ron, if you oh, want to flip him off, go right ahead. I would never do that. Never do that. Underneath the table where we can't see the camera, Ron, Charles. <laughs> That's fine. Doubles, I win. <laughs> Big blocks, 9,800. Please, um, how much do I have to pay to have the Bowsmas extra tech, Ron Stone? What could I do for that after what they did last weekend at coin? Yeah. Well, Extra Steve, tech on the Balsamus. We've made a note of that. So. Steve um Steve twisted the throttle so hard in the final Saturday night, he broke the damn thing. He was on a pass, and all of a sudden, it just stopped. And he went like this with the throttle. <laughs> it was opening all the way up, but the tractor wasn't going nowhere. They'll they'll give you a weight break based Bosma based on the the poundage of cheese curds you bring for the the, the people weighing you in. There you go. Suck it up a little bit, doesn't yeah, it? Boy, Bosma, you're gonna have to get curds. a hold of Kevin real fast and see if he can get you some. Yeah. So who else coming down out of this crew here? Uh, we'll be down Wednesday, all of us. So, my gang, uh, Doug and Hope and Kenzie and I. I heard a rumor Wednesday down, right? or Thursday. I'm not sure which. Okay. I I heard a rumor that the uh, remedy was not going to make it. It's not looking really good. Not looking promising. Are you no. waiting on parts Ouch. like the rest of the yeah, world? Yeah, my cylinder head. Okay. My cylinder That's head. The, those are kind of important. Well, we tried to start it without, but we didn't have any compression. So. <laughs> <laughs> He wasted like 32 cans of ether and he couldn't figure out why. <laughs> Charles, Charles was two fisting them. Two like two fingers, just four cans of ether, and she wouldn't even turn over, Ron. I've got a cylinder head in the back of my car that I brought back from Illinois, but it's I the saw wrong, that for wrong shape for yours. Alice. Yeah, that, I recognize that Alice Chalmer head. Hey, can't you put a John Deere big block on your shelves? I got yeah. it. It'd probably make you do better. Probably. Probably. Well, I like to be a red guy and go chase you John Deere guys. It's all good. Well, we've got we've got plenty of four ones. So uh, as much as we'd like to see you here, we've, we've oh, got no. plenty. We're class. still we're still trying, but I'm just okay. being realistic. So yeah, I hear you. I hear you. So we got a little more good news. The the Cowboys they are uh, sponsoring up our polar meal in the back. So everybody will make sure that they're entered pulling. They get to get back in the polar middle this time. We're going to start out kind of light on, I think it's just like Wednesday night. It's just like chili and vegetable soup. And I don't know what else they'll have. And then he moves into, uh, then he moves into, uh, forget what, uh, Thursday night he's going to have hot dogs and hamburgers, but they'll be really good. Then we go into hamburger steak and chicken or something for Friday night. Then he said Saturday night we're going to have, I think he said ribs and full-on barbecue. So it's going to be good. I like it. There's my tech guy right there. Yep, you take care of the Bowsma boys, Jer. <laughs> <laughs> then we got the, uh, the concession guy. I was trying to get him to open the restaurant up so we'd have a breakfast on Friday and Saturday. Yep. But he's agreed to have business and gravy it's the breakfast food in the concession. So everybody that spends the night will have something to eat on site where we don't have to leave if you don't want to. It won't, it won't be free. We'll have to buy it, but that's still be all right. Good deal. I mean, you're rolling out the carpet. I mean, I just, you guys have a great, great facility, great event. You guys all know what you're doing. Just need, need a little bit of luck. And that'd be no COVID and good weather. <laughs> no pandemics. Yeah. No uh, yeah. No 18 inches of We're snow. We're taking donations, too. Yep. It's a big it's a big chunk to put all this stuff on. So, Hey, Ron, who do we got on the show tomorrow night? We got, we got a plan yet? Um, I need to reconfirm and make okay. sure, but I talked to um, the Petch boys. Okay. Kyle Petch. Yep. Uh, dad is Fred Petch, longtime announcer for the Outlaws, been around pulling for years. That's a thermal thunder tractor, yes. 
and we'll bring Fred on as the legend. And then Fred's grandson, Kyle's son, is going to take controls of that tractor as a young gun this season with the Outlaws. So Thomas we'll have is a legend a and a young gun times, on there Ron. tomorrow night. Hey, hey, Ron. Tom has asked this question three times. So can you let's 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 answer it now. Can you see? Yeah, it? he's about to have a conniption fit. He's yeah, trying to find didn't the understand what man. you just said there. Not sure if it was your connection or mine, but um, can you see the screen? Uh, you need your glasses. Uh, parking guy. What? I guess he's asking what is the latest someone can come in at night and still yep. get in the gate. Twenty-four hours. That's how we do things at Caltown. So twenty-four like hours, it. Thomas Kimmins. We start what time? Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday morning. Starting Tuesday morning, we'll go 24 hours. Whatever time you get there, you can get in. Yeah. And guys, my battery is about to die and I'm not plugged in here. So, so see you tomorrow. Ron? Yeah? Bye? Did we lose him? Yeah. Yeah, your audio goes first and then video, apparently. We lost him. Nice. He'll circle back. I'll trickle he'll down. Cir he'll you just got that, you get the confused look on the face. No yep. audio. It happens. It he'll happens. circle back tomorrow. It's okay, Charles. I live my life like that most of the time, so. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, I'll Christina come back when you apologize, call. Cody. <laughs> <laughs> There's a really great wow. video on YouTube about that too, of all the uh, the corporate sayings and stuff like that. It is hilarious. I'm gonna need you to just land the helicopter and talk to me in plain English. See, I haven't heard the land the helicopter thing. I'll get Circling right around to you. though and tabling. I don't want any ten thousand foot views. We gotta we gotta get really granular with this. Granular. Yeah. I oh, actually uh, one of the guys on my staff actually worked for a company called Granular. Did some great things for him. Yeah, I'm sure he's blowing around like sand in the wind. No, we've done what it what it takes to lock him down. Okay, we good. need him on our team. He does amazing things for our products too. Amazing. Well, looking forward to Kansas City, and then then it's all. Full speed forward on the Polar's Championship. I was, I know we still need to have some Polar's sign up that have that have been fan voted in. They have until March 13th. I know the, you, all of us have been working on it today. Brent was messaging some people out. Did, we, did he get a list out today at all, Charles? I never saw the final version, but uh, we okay. will definitely make that happen. So we're getting close. Yep. I stopped by yesterday on my way home from. Uh, you coined Brent rode down with us and Mackenzie and Hope and Doug and we did I made a little video walking through the track trying to show everything and we were just I wanted Doug to take to see everything so he kind of knew what we were getting into and it's all good in the hood. It was just it was exciting, guys. That's such a cool facility. Such a cool facility. Um I don't have a lot else. Cody, Ryan, Charles, do you have much else, guys? I don't. Um, I've been actually the whole time. That's why I keep looking off screen. I've been running through my photos from Saturday night from the finals and uh, from Ducoin and be sharing those soon. And great show again. Hope uh, everybody can come back next March for for that one one more time. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of that's that was kind of it for me. I'm I'm going to go dark now. I'm not going to be at events until the end of. Uh, april when drag racing season starts up for me so this is this is kind of it it's going to be quiet now for uh almost two months yeah look at that goofball what if we convince your pretty girl to come out to that, kansas city will that well, get you to come out to kansas city it, uh, unfortunately it won't but actually this photo there is another version of this picture this is the mexican standoff photo where christina is taking a photo of Ryan taking a photo of me taking a photo of the track. 
<laughs> my head hurts. Yeah, so did mine after it was over with. It was a good weekend, yeah. Yeah, we're going to Cow. I mean, we're going down to Cowtown. I know Roos is going to be down. Cody's going to be down. So we're planning on going down there. And uh, Jason Skillen's coming down. That's awesome. Will ship be moved, Chuck? I don't know. I've heard, I've heard lots of different things, and I'm not going to confirm anything. That's not my place. But um, there's nothing to confirm right now. Yeah, I think they're having a meeting pretty soon, and I'm guessing because next weekend's busy. Keystone, Mountain PA. Ship Squan is going on in Indiana, and then uh, for the NTPA, and then obviously Cowtown Showdown, we're promoting that. So there's a lot of, not promoting it, we're helping promote that. So a lot of different things going on. So yeah, after Matt's, nothing until the end of May. Wagler, ODSS, Wagler into April, but May will be there super fast. Yeah, it's coming fast. It is coming fast. I know Chuck was down in Liberty, Kentucky. I, I got to kind of get through Facebook and share some of that around a little bit. Um, but no, it was just a great time. Leroy's daughter sang the national anthem Friday night and Saturday during the day, and just awesome, just awesome. That was that was really cool. Yeah, her singing that anthem, I was super proud of her. Any auctions for Ryan? No, Beard? shut up, Ben. Jesus, Ryan. <laughs> no, I need a chance to grow back out, and I'm trying to convince Cole to uh, shave his or. Cut his mullet at uh, Ship Shawana next year. I want a break. Hey, what happened to Robert Fuller? Blew the side panels out on so, what Saturday night? Yeah, let me. No, Saturday during the day. Was it? I, just at the starting line, it just like it's like it hopped and it just both panels just fell off and he rolled on them. I got video of it. I haven't had a chance to upload it yet. Let's see if we got a, if Ryan got a photo of it with his camera. I'm rolling through the 85s right now. While you're doing that, I just uh, slowly trickling out to uh, farm show. So I just released Saturday afternoon pictures here, too. You rat bastard. You're ahead of me. Just barely. Rat. You're trickling them out like one at a time. I'm just like posting the whole album. So. No, I've been I've been trying to go by class. Oh, yeah. I don't have time for that. It's by session. I have to turn it into bite-sized chunks or it just becomes way too daunting. Right. There's only, there's only like a hundred in this one. So it's not too bad, but there's pretty, Jerry shut it. There's a pretty cute kid to start the album. And then there's a cute kid to end the album. So if you make it to the end, just saying, please tell me that one of those cute kids is one that I'm actually holding. Uh, I need to. I need to see that picture. No, I'm saving that one. You are a jerk. And I don't <laughs> like you. <laughs> Ooh, hell yeah! Look at that. Is that Dylan or Kevin driving? Uh, I'm pretty sure Dylan was driving all weekend. Yeah. No, I. To be honest, uh, the the albums they get better as the uh, as the weekend went on. So Saturday Same afternoon, pretty good album. And then Saturday night's going to be pretty wicked. But that picture you got there is one where Ryan probably snapped the picture and dropped the camera and took our front end again. So there was a, there was a one person between two concrete barriers, and he was sneaking out of there. And I said, You stay behind these barriers. I don't want to get yelled at because you had a beer money shirt on. And uh, he goes, I was just clicking away, Jason. All of a sudden, I'm like, Whoa. <laughs> but that's a good shot. I still think the one from him down in Georgia was hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, that video. Well, no, the the pictures I got him running. I was like, it wasn't that close. He was, he was coming right at me. I was like, you had like forty feet, man. You're fine. <laughs> We're training him. We're training him. Did he have fun? He had a blast. Good. That's that's the most important thing, because that's what that's what keeps us all coming back. Right. I mean, if we're not having any fun, you know, why the hell do this? Exactly. Go home. We can do something else. Because it makes you tired and it costs a lot of money. <laughs> uh huh. God knows we're not making money on these photos most of the time. Mm, no. I'm trying to find some picture of Fuller's uh, side shields, but Ryan must have missed that. I know I got video. We just 
you know what it's like, guys, getting home and trying to get through everything. So, uh, yeah, yep. nightmare. Nope, never seen and never dealt with that before. Never dealt with that before. Never. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. I'm completely caught up on all my photos. <laughs> There's a picture of it going down the track. So, I I walked up to Robert and his son after they won, and I said, "Hey, now you guys got some new side shield money." <laughs> They were back there pounding them out, getting them going, and they zipped them on there, and away he came out, and he won the session. So first hook, the side sheet, they just fell off. He ran over them, got stopped, and then they came back and put them on, and he came out and won the session. And then got second in the final Saturday night, just, just I mean, like this far behind Esden Marley. So. And you never know when, you know when it ran in the finals. Like, I didn't know the story. Somebody told me after the class was over, you'd never know that it had happened. Yep. I'm telling you guys, from a perspective of a well-run show, that baby was on the nuts all night long, all three nights. It was just – and it was cool to see the mini rods inside. Bruce Slaw already said that they'll be back. Mm -hmm. If he just needs to know, you know, ahead of time. and Because a lot of the mini guys really weren't going to get ready until, you know, mats or, you know, that thing in a couple weeks in Louisville. Some of them didn't know about this or they were still on vacation or whatever. So Bruce really feels – and watching Jeff hurt you guys on a mini rod is the coolest thing in the world. I don't care. I just I love his enthusiasm. I mean, with Tyler and Bruce and Chase Richardson and then Harmison was there and Dylan Bunnage was there. It was cool. It was really cool to see all those guys. So, Did Harmison have a rough weekend? Yeah. yeah he, head gasket, right, Charles? He had, a, he had a fuel line blow off and it leaned it out, um, torched a couple pistons, and then lifted the supercharger. Ouch. Hey, I sent you a screen share here, Jason. To Messenger? No. Oh. Sorry, my bad. There you ah, go. I love that. That's John Murray's little one? That's John Murray's little girl. Yeah, yeah John, John, when his wife were running camera, I think, this weekend, right? Yes. Sarcastically saying, you guys making all kinds of money on pulling, just like we pullers. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. We can all pull our checks at the end of the season and uh, share <laughs> the profit. Yeah, I think, but between all of us, we could buy like maybe a couple of cups of coffee. Yeah. Probably. Maybe. I had to laugh. That cone just decided to leave. Cone has left the chat. <laughs> no, did Jeff did not sell like those unlimited Ryan? supers. They are being reworked, and they will be back out. Okay. Thanks, Charles. So remind me again, Ryan, how many years has he been doing this? All of them. All of them. There's the man. Do you know who you were shooting when you shot that? Ryan told me a, a background a little bit, but I don't remember, to be honest. Nope. He had no idea. That's cool. Because that's pretty much gangster right there. OG. Yeah. Yes. Big time. He's kind of the keeper of the dirt. The keeper of the dirt. Here's some other uh, kid shots type of thing. That was pretty pretty good there. Yeah, he okay, was having, a, us. He's a, having a blast. There was one kid I wish I I wish I could have got him. He was sitting like four down from me. And when the pro stocks were going on, he was sitting there going like this with his hand. You can hear bump, 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 bump. And he just kept going on and on. And I was trying to catch it on video and I didn't catch it at first. And I caught like just the very end of it. I was mad because it was so cute. But yeah, it was pretty good. That little kid got his parents in trouble, didn't he? Which one? That one on screen? That one on the screen. Probably. Can't remember who it was, but somebody, one of the one of the uh, uh, the facilities people came up and kind of bawled them out and said, "Hey, kid, get that kid out of there." Really. Yeah, he was climbing a little close to the sun. Mm. 
This is the other one. Uh, the when the smoke tube left the chat. Yes. I mean, it just exited stage right hard. I got a video of Whitworth's run queued up when you're done, Code. You're good. Whenever. No, we're a, we're a team. That's cute. That's yeah. a little Miley, isn't it? Yeah, that's Miley. Yeah. I was first, standing first. there. Yeah, we were all standing together when you shot that one. I remember that. Yeah. So I was like, wait, you're telling me that I can't drive this one? It's like, okay, well, you drive this time. I'll drive next time. That's awesome. That that's kid awful. tried to kill his dad once with a, with a, a UTV with a side-by-side. <laughs> I heard the story of that at uh, farm show. It was pretty funny. Ugh. That was a that was a rough one. Then here's some of the pictures that. That he got that Ryan got these with my camera. Um, just glad he's okay. This is this would be the Farm Boys Fantasy Chassis, you guys. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, Scott was hooked. Bruce just just hooked. He was hauling hauling balls. You can tell the picture. Then she just got a little right there's one got bad. That track was mean. I mean, like, legitimate mean, guys. It was taking all the power you had. Hey, would you mind, would you run that video back one more time? Yep. Just let me cue it up quick. I'm pretty sure his whole body came forward in there. It was rough. So, because I had some slow mo videos I haven't had a chance to put together yet. So, and I'm pretty sure whoever it was that was uh, claiming that uh, Brandon Bungart screwed up the sled setting and purposely caused this and all that crap. Oh, that's a bunch of crap. And you should apologize for wasting oxygen while you were typing out that response, douche canoe. That sled was perfect all all weekend. Yeah. I just think a and little what bit of are you right? to make Charles, that sort of a crooked, dumbass don't argument. Don't I mean, the box hadn't even topped out yet, so there was no jerk against the chain. It just it was a wild ride. I mean, how are you gonna pin that on the sled? I don't know. Uh, runs the track at a certain pole that happens the same way that Bowling Green seems to think that if it had been his pole, it never would have happened. So, yeah. hey, good for you, buddy. I hate well, guys who armchair quarterbacks and stuff like that. That really bothers me. We've had these chats so many times. Anybody can type in anything. You know what I mean? That's just how yeah. it goes. So. That's just how it goes, friends. That's why Howard Stern doesn't read the comments. Yep. So how okay, serious yeah. of an injury is two broken, fractured I think two vertebrae? fractured vertebrae. I'm not a doctor at all. so. Yeah, but one of your best friends is. I can call him quick and ask him. But... Uh, you know, that, that would be good. I'll get a full report on there for you, and I'll let you know. Well, I mean, I'm I'm kind of half kidding, but no, I, I, mean, I don't right. know how serious that is. I mean, does that take Scott Whitworth out of pulling for the next year, the next two years, five years, permanently? I mean, I don't know. I, I really mean, we've seen. Know. I mean, we've seen injuries that that get guys good and scared, and it gets them out of the seat. Um, you know. 
we didn't see Steve Boyd much after he took that wild ride in Farley and, and got knocked silly. Um, and there have been plenty of other rides that we've seen over the years um, that, that I'm sure have scared some guys pretty good. I'm wondering what an L, you know, what fractured vertebrae is on that, you know, sliding scale. That we're looks gonna, like the chalk line scale. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. Who got these shots? Are these are these Ryans? These are all Ryans. Yeah, he, he hung out for a lot of the weekend in that gap right there, at about mid-track in that side of the wall. Good work, my asky. Yeah, he did a good job. I just got a message from Tucker. I can't even read. Yeah, so, so did I. So, yeah, we know better. Yeah, Jerry says Brandon's one of the best out there. The sled was perfect all week. The only one they and the only one they even had a pull off in potential pull off would have been um, the eighty five limited pros on Friday night, and I think that track was probably just a little bit better than Brandon even thought. And that for the first night out, hasn't been in that facility for twelve years. I mean, I don't even. I don't even need to defend Brandon Bungard. He's he's a man. He's the man. So it's all good in the hood. It's all good in the hood. That's where Ryan might have been going. Oh, this is kind of close, right? I was <laughs> gonna say monkeys can be trained. There you go. Crap, we're gonna run out of a job, Cody. No, we're not. Trade secrets. I know, Trade I, know secrets. I have been. I've been running out of a job, that's for sure. Although I keep giving Murray some good shit. Uh, I, I gave him a challenge, too, by the way, Brian. Did you now? I did. What was the challenge? So I uh, I had to ask him because I, I said, no, I challenge everybody. That uh, Charles, yours is coming, too. I just I haven't figured out what I want to do. But um, I said, if, if I give you a challenge, then – or it, I, I take that back. I said, uh, I also gave you a challenge, Ryan. And he said, well, what is it? I said, well, if I tell you what your challenge is, then I'm going to tell him what his challenge is. And so I told him what your challenge is. And I told him his challenge is uh, B-roll. He needs to get some B-roll footage. So, but uh, yeah. There he is on the right break. And that's when I got a little ticky womp is that's all that happened right there. And then this happened, and that's when the rocking started. Can happen to the best drivers there are. So, for sure, I uh, I self inflicted a challenge on myself during uh, 466 Limited Pro Saturday night to see if I could do it, and uh, it it worked. So I might have a return challenge. Wait, did you bring the old camera? Did you bring the old camera with? I did. No, I didn't. I, I didn't. I knowing what we were going to be into for the weekend, I didn't. I did not. So that stayed behind. And actually, I think the effect with those is going to be a lot more pronounced outdoors. So I kind of want to right. save it. But uh, no, I, uh, I I tried something and that I've done a lot with antiques, and I tried to sun fast stuff and got away with it. So, had a boy. Yours is coming. Just wait. All right. Bring it, man. I, I love Ryan, it. Ryan's, Ryan's challenge is a reflection. Gear I, you know what? Are. And he's talked about that. And I know that was I, – I could have seen that coming from you because he's, he's remarked on your ability to pull that off in the past. So, Well, my it kind of like geared around water, but you could take that in multiple different ways. I mean, you think about it. If you take a nice polished chrome bumper on a semi – but the subject needs to be in in the reflection. But but water, like he lives in town, he's got a lot of buildings like with water around there. Like you could take a wicked cool capital picture, but your focus is in the water, not on the actual capital. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, but I just don't have a pulling tractor to put in the photo. And so by definition, then the photo is probably not gonna turn out. There it is. There's the picture I was talking about. All four out of the dirt. Jeez. <laughs> oh, wow. 
He did catch that. That's he awesome. did get it. Wow. I saw, I saw Scotty and Charles at the hotel Saturday night drinking some whiskey and Sprite, and I said, if I was you after that pass, I'd be drinking no Sprite. It would just be straight Canadian whiskey. <laughs> he did. He told me he got the shot, and you were, you were right. I hadn't had a chance to go through these, Charles. Hey, get down. What I mean, so how did how did he get them all four off the ground with the front end up? It you know it did it a coughed. weird yeah Magic. It, coughed, it coughed on him and just unloaded everything and it it just launched the truck up out of the dirt and it actually came down really hard it snow plowed the front into the into the track and launched a a complete ribbon of clay up out of the track when it hit actually I, I've got that photo but um, yeah it was. It was a bumpy ride. Ouch. Was that the only pass he made that that weekend? Oh, well, he he made all three, Ryan, and he'll be in Caltown as well. So. Oh, really? Yep. Well, that. I'm excited to see that thing run. Have you never seen it run? Oh, I've seen it run, yeah, but you, I mean, it you've was, seen it. It the first couple of times I saw it run, it was. <laughs> He's still working out some kinks and getting everything going. So, yeah, that was the first time I saw it was this weekend. And, yeah, it was it was 120 feet. It was super exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so, Cody, that, that was just it. enough to lose momentum. Then the right. sled comes up and bangs it, and that's when it kind of happens. So. Sure. I just looked at the, I was looking at the fact there wasn't a whole lot of slack between the chain in the, the the truck and the sled there. Yep. It's so just for those who aren't fast. familiar with that truck, I mean what's what's really cool about it beyond the body style look of it. And it being a twin turbo versus supercharged, he does run actual ethanol in it. It's not a yep. methanol motor. It's an ethanol right. motor. And it's intercooled because of that to, to keep it cool, air to ice water intercooler um, between the, the, the chargers and the intake manifold. But on top of that, this truck doesn't have a steering wheel. It's joystick steered. It's all on servos. There is no steering wheel. It's a joystick steered truck, so it's it's pretty cool. And the fact that he sits so far back in there, yeah, he yeah. does. He does. Yeah. I mean, like he's he's not even in the windows. He's behind the windows. Yeah, he's in the he's in the in the tank, so to speak, where right where he sits. Yeah. So Hunts bought Dirty Pearl, and then Hunts have Shameless. Shameless is a brand new truck. It had a rougher weekend. It actually lifted the blower completely off. On Friday night, they got it fixed. It came back Saturday, and I don't know what it did, but it banged again Saturday, Charles. I didn't get a chance to talk to them, but they're all the way up from Texas, and they had both trucks there, and it was fun to talk to those guys. So, Yeah, bad luck uh, for a couple other guys. Uh, Bernie Platts with Little Bad Alice, he had issues in warm-up uh, Saturday before Saturday night, um, season up a water pump, so that helped them out. It was one of them stupid things. Um but you know that's that's part of the sport. It's part of it. It, it just it happens. I'm gonna show Paul you. Would have a Paul would have a lot of details more on that if he if he was on tonight. They found some other stuff in, in addition this weekend that they're gonna change on that tractor for uh, the, once this, the outdoor season comes. I can share my other screen, guys. Hold on. They think the fuel pump took a crap. Well, that would make sense. Kind of give you what Charles was talking about. I got some video of that. Yeah. Check this out. I like the tie-dyed Nerf balls. It's pretty neat. That would take some getting used to, joystick steering. 
going down the track, you know. I think well, I think he still has independent brakes, you know, for for the rear axle. That that part's normal, but the joystick is for the front. Yeah. Right, but I mean, it, you're used to. I mean, that whole. Yeah. You know, Tracy you're right. with no, I, I agree. Of, Tracy with a Honda type of thing there, but. Not this the, is the shameless truck of hunts I was telling you about, guys. It's a sharp. We have some outlaw truck and tractor pulling competitors competing this weekend in Decoin, Illinois. So I wanted to bring it to the outlaw family's attention. We're live on Facebook right now as we're starting up the trucks. I was live on Facebook with my phone, Charles, and I had my little camera. Yeah. What truck was that one originally, the tea bucket? I think it's brand new, I thought they said. They're yeah, okay. watching right now. Maybe they'll comment. Okay. He, John said it was the first time it's ever been down the track. So. Oh, okay. All right. All right. And you said they had another truck as well? They have Dirty Pearl, and they have this one. Gotcha. Okay. So Dave drives Dirty Pearl, and then John is dad right there in the seat, and this is his. They really should make air pressures out of that stuff, by the way. Brand new. Yep, brand new, Charles. Okay. Yep, cool. Nice. Shameless. I have I have a video of the old of American ethanol start, and I want to show this to you guys before I let you go tonight. Except I'm a ding dong. I don't know how to run my computer. So. Is this where we like to we pause for a moment of silence? Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Here we go. I got it right here. Bum, 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 bum. Sorry, guys. I'm almost there. It's all good. Here we go. Yeah, guys, Tucker just texted me. He said the minis hit 34 mile an hour indoor Good and Lord. stopped them. I mean, just what Tyler, when he won Saturday night, Charles, he was what? Like this far from the sand pile. He was, was real coming. close. Real close. I didn't happen to see when I was up looking at it closely who did the intercooler. I think there, there's some uh, marine offshore power boat companies that do intercoolers like that for, uh, for V8s, and that might have been where they sourced that one. Logan, relax. Oh. I think the 
monster. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Yes, kids. V8 can do the womp womp too. <laughs> so they were doing the zoomies, guys, as you can tell there. So hmm. it was awesome. <laughs> And it just echoed in that building. Yeah, it sure things. did. It was wild. It was wild. So. Uh, hold on. I got one more video, guys. I need to show you. There's a few comments there, too, Jason. Okay, hold on. Sorry. Yeah, I got to talk to Shane. Two to three months on a fractured vertebrae. Okay. So March, April, May, June. Yeah. Good. Here's a slow-mo of um, uh, Jeremy sent this to me. Kajos. I, I don't know if I'm saying his name right. K-J-O-S-E. Is that silent? Chose. Chose. Thank you, Roos. Try to zoom in on this a little bit. But you can really see it. This is Zolik's video on the big screen. You can really, I love the slow-mo like this. That's what you call a two-wheel drive truck doing an ollie. <laughs> right? Almost stoppy. They do such a good job with that live stream, you guys. Right there, man. Mm. Mm. Goodbye says it all, fellas. So, hey, before we all leave, we should. Uh... I wanted to take a second and just express our condolences on behalf of Beer Money Nation to the family of Brad Pickering. Um, for those of you involved with uh, Outlaws or Northwest Missouri uh, Truck and Tractor Pulling Association, Brad lost a, uh, he put up a hell of a fight, but uh, he ultimately lost a battle with uh, pancreatic cancer a couple of days ago. So he, uh, he and his dad, well, his dad, believe I've got this right, dad runs one of the outlaw sleds, uh, okay. the Red Rock sled. Um, but the family, along with Doyle Bounds, um, ran the Missouri Mule D21 for years and years and years. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that I was, that I, saw one of Brad's and I think Cody actually saw it too. I don't think he had his camera with him. Um, saw one of Brad's final passes on the Missouri mule and uh, just want to wish them well. Uh, you're in our prayers. We love you. And we're thinking of you. And 
you know what, maybe in in some way, shape, or form, the before we're all gone and off this planet, we can find an end to uh, to cure cancer, so we don't have to do things like this. Agreed. So, keep the faith. Agreed. Thanks for that, Ryan. Well, Charles Brad was a good dude. Yeah. Guys, anything else? Charles, you got anything, bud? No, I'm, that's it for me tonight, guys. Cody? That's it for me. Okay. Cowtown's next. Yep. Thanks for that, Ryan. Cowtown Showdown, everybody, March 16th through the 19th. <coughs> City, Missouri, be there. And um, I'll wrap up a video and we'll get out of here. Have a good night, guys. See you. Kind of fun. That that was such a cool. Thanks for doing the toy thing, Ryan. Bringing those guys on. That was neat. That's fun, isn't it? It was. Yeah. Now every now everybody's gonna hate you because you're gonna go in and bid stuff up, and they're not gonna be able to get what they thought was a bargain. <laughs> no, no, no. I no, hate no. to be the bearer of bad news. You weren't getting a bargain anyway. It was a farm all land collection toy. Right. It was gonna go for big money. Love it. I'm gonna get out bid on all the stuff that I was bidding on. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I just determined I wasn't gonna be able to bid. <laughs> well, I determined I was going to be able to bid, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to get squashed on a few of them. I know I have already on a few. <laughs> yeah. All right, but guys. Have a good night. Take care. Later on. Yes, yeah.